Hello, everybody. Uh, first, I'd like to ask you, what do you see here? You see uh, trash, waste, food packaging, probably dirt, things you actually don't want to look at. I see uh, beauty, I see aesthetic, I see potential for new ideas, and first I see raw material for new designs. This bag was made with uh, used uh, coffee bags, car inner tubes. This is also made with coffee bags and many other accessories for the house or for fashion. Um, this uh, vision I owe to my childhood, that whatever was in the house, uh, we would have to reuse it before going to the shop, thinking, I need it, therefore I go and buy it. So my father would take an old wooden door to make a shelf. My mother would make all new clothes for us out of old textile that was lying there in the house. And I have always seen my grandmother a knitting woolen jumper to make new jumpers with that wool for us. So this has really shaped the way I look at the world and the way I look at discarded material, unwanted, and many names for it, trash. So I became also uh, creative. And this is the uh, pair of slippers I made for my doll when I was seven. So I would use, uh, my father was a scuba diver, so we had these uh, old neoprene scuba diving suits, so I was using this to make the sole, and an old jacket from my mother I would cut for the top. You see, it's all hand-stitched, very rough. <laughs> um, I don't see how, I don't know how you feel when you see uh, pictures like this, of cities, rivers completely flooded, covered with uh, plastic bags, plastic uh, uh, debris on the beach, or um, high-tech waste, which are all our printers, cell phones, computers we just buy and throw, and that we send to very far away countries so that we don't have to deal with it, so we don't have to look at it. Uh, this way we don't really address the question of this high-tech uh, craziness. <laughs> uh, this is a city um, this is Napoli, after three days of the strike of the garbage collectors. Um, as cities grow bigger and bigger, more densely populated, uh, they are the biggest, uh, the largest creator of waste. So this is how Napoli is after three days of strike. The city doesn't move anymore, it's completely stuck, and the whole system collapses. So this is how important waste is in an urban environment. My inspiration at the beginning uh, would be found in these kind of places, which is a big warehouse that is sorting out all the uh, used material that you would put in the containers for this charity organization in the city. So there is a whole uh, net different network to uh, sort out and dispatch this material. Not everything goes to Africa or to Russia uh, to um, disadvantaged people, there is a whole range of fabric and uh, clothes that also stays here in Europe. So I would uh, find an uh, old stock of old towels, for instance, so I would develop a whole collection with, uh, with these uh, used towels, or an uh, old stock of army blankets as well, that would give birth to a collection of uh, winter coats. Uh, Having a shop in Amsterdam at the beginning, uh, the mailman understood very quickly what I was doing, what I was into. So he started to give me these old uh, bags from the Dutch Post, and it gave birth to a few collections, also of bags and, and clothes. And, uh, so what people often ask me is, but where do you get your ideas? Uh, do you wake up in the morning and think, OK, today I'm going to make a bag, or I'm going to create a uh, a dress or something like this? Well, actually, it is the other way around. The material first comes to me, uh, that somebody is going to give me uh, old inner tubes and uh, 10 old t-shirts, say, oh, I'm sure, Katel, you can do something with that. 
So one plus one, the idea of making slippers, for instance, come. So this is how I develop my articles at the beginning. And then I ensure that there is enough of the raw material to make a little production. Uh, for instance, this is a, a bag made with old coats. And you can see that vintage coats with a special design for the pocket that takes a long time to make. So why not reuse that design that took a long time in the first hand in the actual design? Huh? And the handles are uh, phone, phone, uh, telephone cords when the phones were corded. Uh, it's a uh, history now. <laughs> so. Um, then I would go back uh, home in France on the seaside, and there's all these selling clubs at the end of the season. They say, well, we have all these used cells. I'm sure you can do something with them. So again, it becomes a source of uh, raw material. Um, and life took me to many different countries, such as uh, Ukraine, to do uh, environmental work. And in the Ukraine, uh, the economic situation is uh, very tough. Many poor people. Uh, so people end up selling their uh, old personal belongings on flea markets. So you can basically find all what you, all what you dream of. So um, the, I would buy uh, vintage old fabrics from uh, individuals to develop a whole collection of uh, ballerinas, for instance. Uh, Soviet, uh, Ex-Soviet countries also means a huge army, so there is a whole huge stock of uh, army material in, in, uh, in the Ukraine that I was using for bags, for ballerinas, for many different articles that I showed just one example today. Uh, again, in the Ukraine, in the Soviet time, uh, Ukraine was producing a parachute for the, the army. So uh, when you ask Ukrainian people, do you have some material I can work with, you know, you have to go this way. Uh, almost in every dacha, some, someone has a parachute that it was keeping in case of, you know, because Soviet time was a time of penury, so people would keep things thinking if one day we need to make a tent or something like that. So uh, now that time is over, but uh, still people have so many things um, they can take, take uh, they can part of at the moment. So um, I'm an autodidact. I have never attended uh, design or fashion schools. So uh, my creativity, my creative process is also not the conventional one, it is reversed. When I teach to, uh, in design schools, I first say to, say to the students, uh, to be able to learn with me, you have to unlearn. Uh, a brief in a fashion school would be, okay, you have to imagine a cocktail dress, what does it take to make a cocktail dress? So, okay going to the shop, I buy 10 meters of that, two zippers, two meters of this, and then I make my wonderful cocktail dress. Um, in my case, uh, I would give the students uh, a post bag that is wide like this, long like that, and it has an inscription in the middle, Dutch, French post, whatever. What can you do with this? So from there, you develop not the cocktail dress, but maybe you have to think of something else, a pants, a bag, or... So it's a completely uh, new way of looking at uh, the material that um, can be used for creativity. And for instance, um, when, this, uh, when a lot of high-tech waste uh, came to me, I created uh, ranges of uh, stationaries with old floppies that are really archaeology <laughs> now, nowadays. Uh, computer disks, scratch CDs, old records, Sorry, only collectors now have records in the house, we don't use them. And uh, being French, you know, French people are very much X-rayed in their life, so we have a whole collection, each of us, of uh, X-rays of different parts of the body, so I would also reuse this as the cover of the notebooks. And uh, inside the notebooks, it is not recycled paper, it is reused paper. Reusing, for me, comes one step before recycling. Uh, for me, recycling, recycling the paper, for instance, means a lot using a lot of water, a lot of energy, creating new waste as a result of this process. So it's okay, it's good, but we can do better than this. Uh, I would go to printing houses and ask for leftovers paper so that I don't have to transform this paper to make 
my notebooks. So I would get, you know, little ways, big like this, big like that. And from the size of the paper I have, I would decide the size of my notebook. See? Um, life took me to many different countries, such as India. And there in India, the challenge was a little bit different. Uh, what is designed for our uh, Western societies, craft is to the Indian society. Just in the uh, textile sector, there is 14, 14 million craftsmen in India. So, um, as I was um, in Gujarat working with a, a craft group, the manager, the first day of, of my work there, the manager says, look, we have two problems here. Uh, we have uh, the landscape that is covered with plastic bags because people don't know yet how to dispose of. Even the municipality don't collect the trash, so it's flying all over the place. And we have a, a community of weavers, the best weavers in the world, but they are unemployed. They are unemployed because to create a nice shawl they're going to sell, they have to invest in the yarn, in the wool, so all their costs are upfront. So I put this, the social problem and the environmental matters together, and I thought, let's have uh, the disadvantaged woman in the, in the slum to collect the bags, to wash them, to cut them into long stripes, to put them on the spool, and to have the weavers weave these plastic bags. And there was born a collection of uh, outdoor cushions, placemats, uh, uh, bags, and different accessories like this. In that same area in Gujarat, they are the best embroiderer in the world. These women are so skilled, you know. Same problem, all their costs are upfront, uh, unemployment rate uh, pretty high. So I thought, mm, what could we use that is cheap and that these women can produce, uh, can apply their, their craft on it? Uh, India being a country in the making, there is millions and millions of cement bags laying all over, all around. Just have to collect them, wash them. And because they are woven, they actually have a very nice structure, which makes it very easy for the woman to embroider. And you see that uh, at the end, uh, the, you cannot see the, the cement bag anymore. It's completely covered with the, with the embroidery. So my exploration of India took me to uh, different places, and I ended up in an eco-resort. And then the first day there, uh, the owner told me, well, look, we have all these blindfolds in aluminium that we don't know how, what to do and how to discard. So I develop uh, many different kinds of lamps, and it's all uh, low-tech as opposed to high-tech. You know, I just use, uh, perfor uh, I perforate the, rivet the, the blades, <laughs> uh, I put rivets, or I hand-stitch, and it's the same with the textile. All I need is a sewing machine. So Basically, when I create something, it can be made all over in the world, even with the, in countries where there is very long hours of power cuts, like the Ukraine or India. Um, then again, in India, after the tsunami disaster, there was a lot of um, uh, water tanks distributed to the population, and very quickly they were replaced by a, a, a permanent uh, solution. So I developed this kind of uh, children's house for, for playgrounds, just cutting out windows and doors. And, and uh, in that same playground, there was a need for uh, lamps, like really low-tech lamps for the outdoor. So the restaurants of the Eco Resort was producing all these uh, plastic bottles every day, so they were just used with a bicycle wheel to make a very low-tech lamp. And uh, the turning point in my, uh, in my creative process was my stay in New Zealand, where I arrived uh, barely naked with just my suitcase, so there was no collection of old things around me, I didn't know where to get it. And after three days, it became very obvious that my kitchen trash bin would be a source of inspiration to create things. So it's all stitched with a sewing machine, and it's developed into uh, accessories like trash bin for the house, uh, makeup purse or shoppers. And after a few days, uh, I realized that the, the bottle caps were really easy to collect in the streets on a, a collecting day also, and I developed these uh, uh, shower mats, for instance. So uh, this is a very brief <laughs> introduction to, um, to show you the beauty of trash, to show you the beauty of waste and the potential, and uh, how much of a treasure it can be to create new designs. 
New design doesn't mean new material, new pollution, new waste. It is just about looking around in our office, in our schools, in our house, in our factories, and see what material is there to develop new things. And uh, I will share with you an anecdote. Uh, I meet a friend after 10 years, and he says, uh, you know, I've, I don't remember you very well, but uh, every time I have a tiny piece of chocolate wrap, very tiny like this in my hand, I look at it and I think, what would Ketel do with that? <laughs> so I answer, well, next time wonder what you can do with it. And this is my wish uh, that today, when you leave this room, you also have a fresh look at the waste around you, at unwanted material, discarded material, and that you see it as, uh, as gold, as the gold of tomorrow for creativity. Thank you. <laughs>